What up YouTube? It's your boy Will Ryder here, back at you with another video. Today I'm going to start a bookshelf uh, for my daughter's room and the top of the bookshelf is going to have a record player on it and on the sides will be uh, spots for her to put her records. I uh, just came back from uh, Lowe's and I uh, got some red oak. There's a little more that I wanted to spend uh, but it's already dimensional and I don't have to worry about uh, you know shaping this wood and getting it all milled up and ready for ready for the project. First thing I'm going to do is clean this freaking mess up. Uh, just finished the client project. It's Toys for Top season, so we got crap everywhere. I think it's cleaned up and then, uh, and then we'll get started. All right, so what I'm doing now is uh, marking everything out, uh, what's going to be what. Uh, this is going to be one of the sides. I'm going to cut off the end here. This has got quite a big crack on it. Uh, a piece for the base here because it is still quite rough and this will be uh, facing down and you won't ever see it. It's one of the other shelves. So look at this piece. I'm looking at the grain here. I think this will make a nice side or even the top. And uh, I'm just labeling everything so I know what to cut and what not to cut and how I'm going to do it. And then also Blow the sixties stickers on everything. So I'm just taking stickers off too. Another thing about these stickers is uh, there's some residue underneath. So I wipe them all down with uh, acetone as well. They get rid of all the residue so it doesn't mess with the, uh, the finish if I put any finish on there. All right, so before I make any cuts, I'm just kind of like uh, thinking about how I want to do the shelves. Um, how tall it's going to be and the overall height that me and my daughter had agreed on was uh, about 36 inch about three feet uh, we're going to extend it out a little bit because i want to make each shelf and these are the crude drawings i do most of them are pretty crude that was a birdhouse my kids drew this is actually a quite precise drawing this is for the bed that i did for uh, my 3d printer but this kind of gives me a picture. I'm not using plans. I need uh, to visualize it. I'm a visual learner. Um, I can't just slap it together all willy-nilly like so. Uh, so here I want the uh, I want to have uh, the base shelf about three inches off the ground and then uh, it'll be covered by uh, by a board so you don't have to worry about dust and stuff going underneath it. And I want the shelves about 12 inches and I have to add the three quarter inch because that's how thick the, the material is. Uh, another 12 inches, three quarter, 12 inches. I'm not worried about the three quarter on the top. It's gonna be uh, 12 inches straight up here to this end. And then the, the top piece, I'm gonna bring down about 46 inches. I could go 48, but I wanna square up all the ends of the, uh, the boards. So drawing this out, now I know how deep I'm gonna make this uh, dado for the side of, this, of the shelves. I know how wide it's gonna be. And I'll be able to uh, tell how long I can, uh, or how long the shelves are going to get cut too. So this is this is what I do. These crude drawings are all I need. Um, I tried using SketchUp; it takes way too long for me. Uh, though it does give me a uh, better visual representation of what the end product will look like. But I don't need that. I know this will look good. All right, so I got everything labeled and so i also do that you might not see in some of my videos i actually write how long each piece is supposed to be on the board so i can't screw it up because some of these can be 45 inches long one's going to be 46 uh and the uh, other ones are going to be i think the sides are 40 and a half for the sides uh so i am going to use the table saw i was going to use the chop saw or the miter saw but I want these to be a little more accurate cuts because it is expensive material and I don't have to go back to Lowe's. These things are $37 a piece before my 10% military discount plus 7.5% tax or whatever it is. Uh, yeah, I don't want to have to go out and, and buy anymore. So I am going to use the sled. Uh, there will be some hanging off the edge. All I'm going to do right now is square off uh, one of the edges and then figure out which end looks best to, to keep as the, uh, the part that I'm going to keep. So i got to move everything out of the way.
All right, so now I have that one uh, that one side square and uh, marks so I know which uh, edge I'm using. I'm gonna measure them out. I'm gonna check my mass again. Just use the tape measure and then uh, one of my favorite squares. If you can see that. One of my favorite squares I'll be using uh, just to mark the edge. I don't have to put the line all the way straight down because the uh, table saw is square. After I made this, I made sure it was perfect using uh, David Pachuto's method. Uh, cut, 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 and keep flipping that corner, and then you, you'll see if your uh, piece is perfectly square. And it is. I like this sled, it's a little big. And that's why I got this for smaller stuff. I just got this rockler. Um, I use this from the profits I made from the uh, the coffee table. It uh, works pretty well. I've only used it once. Something I'm also doing is taking that edge on the face and putting it along the, uh, the face right here on the side because where the table saw is going to hit it's going to hit right there first so when I start running across the saw if it's too far this way or too far that way it's going to be a little tiny nick and should be able to see it I'll be able to adjust to get that cut perfect So drawing out the dados for the two sides here, and uh, they're all supposed to be spaced 12 inches apart. This one is at uh, 11 and a quarter. I'm trying to figure out what things went wrong, and I realized that the first line, or the first shell is supposed to be three inches off the ground, and I drew the bottom of the shell three inches off the ground, so everything's off by three quarters of an inch. So I got to redraw all this. Um, and then all I'm going to do is line the bases up together and transfer the lines over so I don't have to measure on the second board and draw some straight lines and get these uh, dados cut out. Alright, so this is how we're uh, going to do the dados. Uh, I got the uh, Samurai Carpenter router jig that I built uh, when I first joined the uh, Samurai School. And uh, I had to build this little jig to run it down uh, along the edges. So I don't screw this up. Uh, I had the depth set already at a quarter inch. That was what my math said it was supposed to be. And I split the wood right here. So I gotta be careful when I go around there to make sure it doesn't uh, twist on me right there. And you see, got a uh, half inch wide uh, router bit. And these are three quarter inch. So I have to go down on one side and then move over to the other side. Let's see how it works. All right, so you can see uh, the jig was uh, off a little bit. I got this little uh, 16th of an inch it came off of here, but this side was also a sixteenth inch over. Let's measure it and see if it's uh, three quarters of an inch like it's supposed to be. And it is about a thirty second inch too big. Let me grab a piece of our shelf. Okay, a little loose. All right, so for the other ones, I am gonna bring uh, this in a little bit and uh, and make sure I get it lined up right. I'm looking at the line now and I see that, it, that the uh, board did shift over a little bit and that's why uh, it was on that side of the line. So let's see if I can uh, tune this in a little better so I'm not wasting any wood. So I flipped this board around uh, so I don't got that bad edge. I don't know why I didn't think of that before. And can I help you? And then uh, I know from this one edge right here, 
It's got to be five and one quarter inches from this edge, so the space in between. Uh, so I don't have to worry about doing uh, any more guidelines. I just make sure that one is the correct distance. Let's try this again. All right, this one looks a little too, too thin. Uh, I've got lines on both the outside. But I like that it didn't take too much material away like that one. I think I can manage with that. Uh, I will use a plane that I have made for this. Rattling plane. I'm just going to use this for the uh, the ends of the shells to take a little bit of material off and make it, uh, you know, fit. I think that's what I'll do. I like this, uh, and I'll adjust each one to uh, make them each fit individually because I know all these boards aren't the, aren't going to be the same thickness because it came from Lowe's. So now that I got those uh, dados done, uh, I need to work onto the top and then we can start uh, initial assembly and then worry about the other stuff later. Dados are pretty easy. So for the top, I'm building it to fit a uh, record player. My daughter just recently got into vinyl and the, uh, the player sticks out about uh, 15 inches and 17 inches long or wide. So I need to connect this piece to this piece and then somehow figure, and you can see the lines here for where the record player is gonna be. I gotta do something around the edges. I can't just have it sticking out here. But to be able to attach these two, I do need to use the joiner and then uh, the biscuit joiner. So we have a nice flat, strong uh, butt connection there. So using just a uh, square, 45 degree angle out, use this uh, protractor and just trace the, the edge of that. And I think uh, this shape here will look nice. Um, I don't want any sharp corners sticking out. So I think this uh, this will be good. I do have to make sure I have this edge sanded before I put this in there because it's gonna be a, a tight corner in there. All right, I think I'm gonna make it uh, curve out here on the ends. Figure out how to draw that. All right, so I got to join it up nicely. I know it doesn't look like it because it, neither of them are very flat, but you push it in together. It'll fit together nicely once I get the clamps on there. Um, I was thinking about when I cut this, it's gonna be hard to get any clamps over on this this end of it to get it to uh, seat real good on the other board. So what I think I'm going to do is right here in these corners, I've got some really nice brass screws. I can find them. Oh, here we go. I don't know, I have many of them. Yeah, I got these uh, these nice brass screws, and I think I'm just going to put brass screw in there once I glue it up. I think it'll look good right there. Won't be too noticeable. Should be able to get a pretty good grip in there. Pull it in tight. So I'm gonna do that for uh, either end. What I need to do now is cut out the, where the biscuits are gonna go. And after that, I am gonna take this over to the bandsaw and cut all this out. I gotta change out my blade though. I got the biscuits cut out. Got it on the other board too. Um, before you watch me butcher this in the bandsaw, please note, the bandsaw is difficult for me. I've never gotten good with it. I need to practice some more. Uh, so I'm about to tear this out. Let's see uh, how good it comes with. Yeah, that's, what's, uh, that's what sanding's for, right?
Well, it didn't turn out terrible. The blade is new and it's a little rough, uh, the kerf on it. So it's gonna take a lot of sanding, but I've done worse. So now we're gonna glue this all together. Oh, I also uh, did the holes in the countersinks for the uh, brass screws. Okay. There's the uh, pilot hole for this. These brass screws, because they will break, I like to put a little, uh, little wax on them. Just a little dab, because I don't want it to get on any of the wood because it hasn't been finished yet. Put a jammer in the hole. And then I hope that it doesn't split. Oh, got some more squeeze out. Another screw on the other side, and then I'm done for the night. See you in the morning. Today is a new day, and Got this uh, glued up all night. I didn't bother taking the clamps off. I'm gonna take that off now and then start seeing this out. And I think we'll be ready for assembly. I gotta think of how I am going to attach the shelves in the dados. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Oh, I gotta sand all that off too. And once I get the sides on, I need to go back to uh, Lowe's to get some small strips uh, of oak to cover up the uh, the edges and for that bottom piece. So. so something I'm worried about with this is uh, the w any weight getting put on that. Oh, that's good and solid. And it's actually Pretty close to flush. I am going to take the card scraper and smooth that out uh, when I'm finished sanding all that down. I just finished uh, the scraping and sanding down the top, and I have to say that is a pretty good looking joint. Can't see it. I'm glad I left it overnight, gluing up nice and strong. I mean, it's pretty obvious on the uh, backside there where the joint is. This piece is actually a little thicker than the uh, and the big piece, and I didn't run anything through the planer, so I'm glad I got the uh, the top lined up right. That's one of the uh, benefits of having a biscuit joiner. This is a lucky shot caught by the security camera. I had to share. I usually don't get this lucky. Like I talked about earlier, I need to. I'm gonna make this a little thinner on the very edges using this uh, rabbiting. Uh, plane and uh, just make it just as deep as the uh, dados here to get it to uh, fit in. I'm going to do each one individually. I got all these labeled for what side goes to what. One, two, and three. B for this side and A for the uh, the other side. I don't know if you can see it's, uh, it's labeled. Well, you probably don't want to stare at my butt the whole time, so I'll put you on the other side. This thing's pretty easy to uh, set up. You got this little uh, guide right here, and I'm going to make it uh, the same size as this dado. What I have to keep in mind is uh, focus. This blade actually sticks out of the edge a little bit, so I can't use this edge. I got to use the edge of the blade right here. So how much it sticks out on that side. Right. 
you can see I've, uh, we should take the little fuzzies off. It's a nice fine edge right there. Let's see if it fits. see that on the camera so sitting there and pretty tight I'm not touching it it's balanced um, this on camera see this boards a little cupped but because of that uh, that edge on the top you can't see it it looks like a, a tight joint on the other side see looks nice and tight it's uh perfect depth so I think I'm gonna do that for all of them so this one's fit um, I'm gonna go grab the other side of the board and do this edge here so we can get this whole board done You see it's a nice tight joint in there um, good depth on it and because of that cup it's even it's even tighter now you can see it just a little bit on the bottom on this side the other side's uh, a little worse so you can see that's a good fit I'm actually gonna take a little more off so it's easier to assemble and then uh, do the rest of them and one of them that first data that we cut if you remember uh, was actually uh, a little big, so we don't have to worry about that side. So before I start sanding everything, I want to make sure everything actually fits the way it's supposed to do. Uh, put the shelves on and make sure the top is the right size and that fits. I don't want to waste a bunch of time and then go to assembly and figure out that all my measurements were off. Uh, and to kind of hold it together, I have these uh, strap clamps and these little corner pieces. I don't know if you can see that far away but these are uh, I use these for uh, picture frames I made some more frames I found these in Japan I still have another one that's uh, brand new in the uh, in the package I haven't found a need for yet but I'm gonna use that to hold it together kind of probably in the center here and uh, I got my daughter here to assist me so let's start with the, the bottom shelf I guess hold this one hold those Eight hundred seventy-five yen. Depending on what the exchange rates, and like eight or nine dollars. What the 
So it's completely out of square right now, but that's gonna be fixed once we put the, uh, the front pieces on. You sure did. They told you. Measure twice, cut once. I don't know uh, how I did it, but I did it. Sorry about my butt crack. I'll keep trying to cover it up. So you're gonna have to look at it and uh, keep my shirt tucked in from now on. It's actually a half inch shorter than the rest of the boards. I don't know how I screwed it up and cut that one board uh, half an inch too short. But, you know, these things happen. That's why I do the dry fit because uh, I've learned from my mistakes. Not the measure twice cut once thing yet, but I was uh, I was able to fix it. It's not that big of a deal. Everything was just shorter by half an inch. And here I'm just uh, venting my frustration a little more. Uh, talking about the bow that it caused and trying to figure out how I uh, cut one board half an inch shorter than the rest. I am quitting for the day at this point. Uh, I had a uh, another Toys for Tots event that I had to go to. So I only got a few hours of uh, work this day and then uh, decided to finish the rest up on uh, Sunday. Well, it get as far as I could at this point. So here we are the next day. Gonna work on uh, assembly of the, the main body of this. I got the forts cut the right length this time, positive that, and I got this one trimmed down, the top piece to, uh, what is it, 45 and a half now. And everything, uh, I, I did route everything that I wanted routed, and I also uh, sanded everything down to uh, 220, because this, some of these pieces will be hard to reach once it's assembled, so I sanded them there now. Just gonna make sure I'm good with the uh, wiping off the glue. So, my daughter Ava, come say hi is going to help me and uh, after we get it all strapped up and glued in, I am going to use some little brass screws to hold the shelves in through the sides. Uh, these are a little smaller, I think these are number eight, the other one for 12, hold that, that front piece down. So, you ready? Let's do this. Bottom, so if there is squeeze out, it'll be hard to see. Punched out with the, the center punch where they're gonna go. There's two there because one of them was a little high. Um, I'm just be using these uh, number 12, I want to say. I can't remember now. Smaller than the other ones that we used. And with these uh, these brass screws, I had one snap off the head before it was all the way tight on uh, the bench I made for our kitchen table. And it took me a long time to get that uh, extracted out. I didn't want to screw it up, so I used these uh, finishing wax. There's a couple on the threads in the end there, and I wipe away the excess. Just make sure it's in the threads there. Kind of helps it uh, drive it down and want we'll to make sure there's no excess because if it gets on the wood, the finish isn't going to uh, show up there. So, we start punching some bolts through here.
All right, what we're doing now is uh, attaching the top. And we got a little bit of a bow in the board already. Um, it was probably there before I started, but we'll be able to get it to flatten out. Trying to make everything, make sure everything's square and flush. Um, I'm gonna put something heavy on top of it. And here on the ends, uh, I get real worried about it splitting, so take it easy. Very nice. Looks good. We have to sand it out a little bit, but to the other side. All right, so what I'm gonna do next is uh, start working on the supports. So the, uh, this is oak. I mean, it's pretty pretty sturdy, but I'm sure over time with all my daughter's boots on it, it'll start to sag. So I do have some pieces that will run underneath each of these. And then the baseboard that's gonna go, I was just gonna do the front, but I'm gonna go on the sides as well, all the way around it. And then I might have a strip that goes on either side up and down, try to give it uh, a better look, and I think I'm going to hide these, uh, these dados at way too. So, let me get started on that. So I got the whole thing flipped upside down. Um, I'm gonna put the, uh, the base in there and I already have this edge and the edge for the two sides routed. Everything's at a good 45. Yeah, that's right. And I'm going to use a, uh, a brad nailer to hold it temporary, uh, get some uh, glue on there, get it attached, and then put the screws in there. The reason I got flipped upside down is because the bottom shelf has already got a bit of a bow in it. It might be from, uh, it from uh, squeezing together, so I need to put some weight in the center so there isn't that, there's a lip on there right now. Uh, when it's flushed up on this end and this end there's a little lip right here oh I gotta turn the deep air pressure up Now I'm just going to brad nail it all. I'm fine. I have to load up All right, now I gotta fix the that bow here in the center. And you're perfect. I think those glue, the glue of the brad nails is gonna do just fine with that. Um, I have enough of these ones that aren't stuck in because the air pressure is only 40 psi. I'm gonna pull those out with some uh, some dikes. 
diagonal side cutters. Okay, everything, uh, all the major components are attached. So you got the base all the way down there. Hopefully that's in the frame. And then uh, put these to support the shelves, all gluing in. Uh, I think the glue will hold them in just fine. I'm not gonna put any screws in those. And that is all I'm gonna get done this weekend. Next weekend, hopefully the wife and the daughter pick out a stain that they like. Uh, I think they want it to be a little darker. And uh, I will get the things that I'm gonna build for each side, the whole, the records. For now, I'm gonna move this into the bedroom, see how the, uh, the little vinyl player sits on top. And that'll be it for, uh, for this video. As always, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. It doesn't help me out because I'm not monetized, but makes me feel better about myself. <laughs> I'm just kidding. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. Uh, tell me why below. I got thick skin and uh, I can take criticism. Thanks for watching. This is how it looks without the clamps. It is certified cat approved. We look forward to getting this stained and back in the room next weekend, a finished product. For the back, we are thinking about either a map or something floral slash colorful. It's what the daughter wants. We will be using this week to find some wallpaper to fit that need.